What's up guys, it's Kai24 back to Gracio Screens and today I bring you another fantastic tech video. And today's video is going to be a tutorial and specifically it's going to be a tutorial about this camera. This is the Sony ZV-E10 and I've done about two videos on this already. So I've done a video where I unbox this wonderful nice new vlogging camera created for content creators by Sony and um, the next video was a kind of a live preview of what this camera is capable of in a kind of real life uh, what would we call it, a real life scenario, a real life situation in, in, in a hands-on real world setting. That's what it was. So today's video is going to be more about using this camera as a webcam. Now, obviously, as a content creator, many content creators out there love to live stream. And that's how I kind of start off my whole content creation career, content creation life. I, I, I don't know. That's how I started to become a content creator is through live streaming. And I've done tutorials in the past where I have used different cameras and showed you guys how to use them for live streaming. I've done uh, a tutorial on the M200, the Canon M200, as well as the Canon M50 and using them as webcams. To and if you're a content creator who's picked one of these bad boys up and want to use it as a webcam, then this video is definitely for you. So I'm going to show you step by step everything that you need to do in order to get this thing running as a webcam. Now there are a couple of things that you're going to need to pick up before you start using it as a webcam and things you're going to need to set it all up uh, together. So first of all, you're going to need the camera. Next up, you're going to need some sort of streaming software and the software of choice today is, as always, going to be OBS Studio or, or Open Broadcast Studio OBS, OBS Live, um, Streamlabs OBS. It kind of works the same in all of those kind of um, programs, but you can use this kind of method in any sort of kind of streaming program depending or live streaming program or live broadcasting program, depending on what you prefer. Now, I prefer using OBS, so I'm going to be using OBS. I have my trusty little MacBook here with my uh, dongle for USBs. So that's there with OBS running. So next up, you're going to need one of these. This is a micro HDMI to HDMI cable. Basically, the micro HDMI side plugs into your camera, HDMI side plugs into a capture card, and this is what allows you to transfer your feed from the camera to your OBS software for live streaming. Now. Talking about capture cards, the next thing you're going to need is a capture card. Now, the capture card of choice for most people who are live streaming is this. This is the Camlink 4K uh, USB capture card. So it looks like a USB dongle. It's just a USB on one side and you've got a HDMI port on the other. However, this is kind of expensive. It's, it's above £100 um, looking at the prices right now. I will pop a link to all of these items in the description box below so you can check them out. And if you need to purchase any of these, you can use those links to directly purchase them. Those links are gonna be Amazon associate links. So if you do click them, it does help the channel out. So please click them, it will help the channel out. So yeah, this is a bit more on the pricey side. If you don't want to go and pick one of these up, or if you've already got a Elgato HD60 or a HD60S lying around that you wanna use, you can use that as well in place of this. Now, the alternative to this, the cheaper alternative to this is one of these. This is a very standard kind of HD video capture USB card. It's a USB 2.0 HDMI capture card, and um, it pretty much does exactly the same thing. I think the only limit on this is this can only output at 30 FPS, whereas this can output 4K at 60 FPS. So there is a quality difference in, in, in that sense. However, I've been using one of these for like forever. All of my streams in the past have been using one of these kind of capture cards, and to tell you the truth, there is very little difference, especially if you're just an affiliate or you're streaming for the fun of it, you're not gonna see a huge amount of difference between this and this. For the purpose of this video, I am gonna be using the Camlink 4K. However, like I said, you can pick one of these up. It's cheaper and it does the job more than well enough and it's perfectly capable of giving you a very high quality stream. So I'm gonna put that to the side. The next thing you're gonna need, which I don't actually have, is a dummy battery. Now, of course, these, cameras come with fantastic little batteries. So this is a Sony NPFW50 battery. However, for the purpose of live streaming, you're gonna need something that basically allows you to stream for a long period of time or allows you to use the camera for a long period of time. This battery is gonna run out if you try and run this for several hours while streaming. So what you wanna do is you wanna pick up a dummy battery. Now I'm gonna pop a link to that in the description box below. And it's basically an NPFW20 dummy battery that works for this camera, um, you basically plug it in, plug the dummy battery into the power socket and it's giving you unlimited power. Now, 
Again, that's going to be in the description box below, but it's very important that you pick this up. You know, I don't intend to use this particular camera for streaming, so I didn't pick one of those up myself. However, for the purpose of this demonstration, you know, the power that it's got, the battery life that it's got in it already is pretty much more than enough. And that's pretty much it in terms of what you're going to need to use as a streaming. I mean, you probably want to pick up a kind of tripod or something to mount the camera on while you're streaming, but that goes without saying. So now let's move on to the kind of settings you're going to have to uh, tweak in this before you start using it as a streaming camera. So if you go and turn your camera on, make sure that you've pressed that button at the top that swaps from kind of picture to video mode. So make sure that your camera is first in video mode and then you want to hit that menu button and what you want to do is you want to go to uh, your video settings. So go into your video settings. This is going to be your second video settings and it's going to be movie one, one of nine. And you want to go down to your file format, make sure that that's HD uh, and your record settings. I've set it to 60p 25m, so that's 25 uh, megabytes per second, super 35. Or you can put it at 60p at 50m. It doesn't really matter either way. I don't think it makes a huge amount of difference. So I've just kind of set it to 25m. So 60p 25m and make sure your file format is XAVC SHD. You don't want to put it in 4K mode. Then what you want to do is you're going to go back to your kind of home screen. So click that, hit that menu button again, go back to your home screen and make sure that your obviously, first of all, your aperture is as low as you can get it. So you want to get the best picture out of it. I'm using the kit lens on this. So the lowest this can go down to is 3.5. Then you want to make sure that your shutter speed, because it is um, because you are filming at 60p, you want to make sure that that shutter speed is set to 1 over 125. So with your shutter speed set to 1 over 125, you can then set your ISO because obviously what you want to do is you want to pop it out, set it up where you want to set it up and then amend that ISO. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to keep the ISO at auto just so that you know, it just makes my life easier. But you know, when you're setting it up, you'd want to set it up perfectly. And then you want to tweak your white balance and everything else to make sure that it looks nice on camera. Then what you want to do is you want to go back and hit that menu button. And then you want to go to further settings. So you want to go to your setup. And then in your setup, if you go to your second page of your setup, you can see here, it says HDMI settings down below. So it's the kind of second to last setting there. HDMI settings, you want to click that HDMI settings and you want to put HDMI resolution. Now, depending on what kind of resolution you want, you can either select 1080p or 2160p or 1080p, you know, whichever one, if you want to make your auto. I'm going to hit 1080p for the purposes of this video. And then the output you want to put as 60p, you know, 60 FPS kind of streaming output is kind of standard. It might, you know, if you're streaming on Twitch or YouTube or whatever, it might kind of hit, drop that down and compress that down to 30 FPS, your output might be reduced. But if you've got that set to 60p as it is, then your quality is gonna be there. And then the next thing you wanna do is you wanna to toggle down to the HDMI info display and click off. And what that basically does is when you've got all of this plugged in, it means that you get that clean HDMI look without any of the menu settings kind of showing up on screen, your screen will be clear as if though it's recording, which is what you want during streaming. You don't want any of that, the menu settings or any of that showing up on screen whilst you're streaming. So hitting the HDMI info display basically gets rid of all of that and you've got a clean screen to work with. Now that you've got that all set up, what you wanna do is you wanna open up this side panel here. Opening up the side panel, you wanna take your HDMI cable and take the micro HDMI cable and plug it in to where it says HDMI. There you go. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pop this on top of my tripod, flip out that screen. So popped in front of the tripod, flipping out the screen, I'm gonna move the tripod onto this side because it's probably gonna look better. Though. You can see the camera here on the tripod and now you can also see everything that I'm doing. Then you wanna take that HDMI port that you've got here and you want to plug that into your cam link or your USB capture card of whatever source that you're using. Then you want to take the USB and unplug it into your computer, your laptop, whatever you are using for streaming. Make sure you plug it into a USB 3.0 port because it just gives you the fast transfer rates. Then what we're going to do is we're going to shift over to the laptop or computer and load up OBS. Now, once you've got OBS loaded up, what you want to do is you want to go down here under sources. So if you've already got your scene selected, you want to go here under sources and click the little plus button and choose 
video capture device. Now, clicking video capture device to bring up this box, you can kind of name it whatever you want. In this case, I'm just going to name it ZVE10 so that I know what the source is. And here, when you go to device, you can select Camlink um, as your device. Now, if you're using the cheaper Camlink alternative or the, the USB capture card, then it will come up as USB video or USB video device or something like that. However, because I'm using the Camlink, it's actually showing up as the 4K Camlink. Now, clicking that is going to bring up as you can see on the screen, it's gonna bring up your um, camera. So here we wanna change the resolution to high. Yep. And we are going to, don't use preset. So we're gonna use a custom resolution uh, and we're gonna change that to 1920 by 1080. And we're gonna change the FPS to 60 FPS and press okay. And here you go, you've got your screen. And as you can see, I'm looking at it right now and it looks very nice and smooth. I'm going to trans hit transform, hit to screen, uh, and it's kind of lost. The, there you go. There's, there's the autofocus kicking in. Um, there's autofocus kicking in perfectly. Now, what you can see here is it's actually quite crisp and clear. I mean, I've got decent lighting. The autofocus is kind of going a bit haywire. Maybe you can't see my eyes properly or something like that. I'm just going to expand it there. There you go, it's picked up my eyes now. The autofocus should be a lot better. And you can see it's actually a very good picture. Like just straight plugged in, it looks pretty good. Now, depending on the type of lighting that you're gonna have, um, it's gonna look different. So you wanna make sure that your room is nicely well lit. You know, I've got those, uh, if I'm streaming, I've got the kind of Elgato uh, key lights here, which kind of nicely light up my face. Over here, I've got just kind of studio lights that are lighting up my face here. So it's pretty good. So if I just kind of turn this around, way you'll be able to see that it's a uh, it's picking up quite nicely i mean it looks pretty good i mean the iso is kind of shifting about like crazy but that's because i've got it set to auto uh when you have that set manually that's not going to do it and that's pretty much it guys that is what you need to do to get this sony zve 10 set up zve 10 zve 10 whatever it is that you want to call it set up as a working webcam and clean hdmi fantastic 1080p resolution it can go up to 2160p resolution so it can go up to 4k resolution as well 60 fps if you can output 60 fps and stream at that then that is absolutely fantastic it looks phenomenal to me like it looks really really good it's a high quality webcam now i wish i still had the m200 to compare it to or the sony a5100 to compare it to but i might do a comparison video comparing what this looks like compared to say something like a Canon EOS R um, when you are using it as a webcam. I might, might, might do that comparison. However, as it looks right now, apart from the autofocus going kind of absolutely whack crazy, um, that might be a partially due to the lens, partially due to the camera. If you've got a better lens, obviously slap that better lens off. I would highly suggest getting the 16 millimeter Sigma um, f1.4 lens it's a fantastic lens very very good autofocus it's very high quality lens and perfect for things like streaming and content creation and vlogging and whatnot um it gives you that nice bouquet in the background that you'd like and um yeah so that's my suggestion if you want to pick that up for the sony cameras however that ends my video here today um i hope you found this useful i hope that if you are planning to use this camera as a webcam this solves all your problems in terms of what you need to do to set up. It's pretty straightforward and simple. So I'm gonna leave you guys now to go ahead and use your webcam for streaming. If you guys have successfully managed to set up the webcam with my help, then do leave a thank you comment down below just to let me know that my video was useful to you. And you know, if it was that useful, then please do hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And you know what I'm gonna say, hit that notification bell if you wanna know when my videos come out next. It's usually once a week that I post, but sometimes it can be more, sometimes it can be less. Until I see you guys next time, until the next video, guys, this is Kai24, signing out.